Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Gut Over It. My name is Dr. Vivian Asamwa. I'm a gastroenterologist in Katy, and this is Gut Over It. Over the month of February, I decided to do a Facebook Live every night, trying to be as informative as possible, talking about something related to the gut. We are talking about questions that you may have for your GI doctor, or sometimes you feel embarrassed to ask, or you think you should know about. So I'm glad to see everyone on tonight. Half of my family is still watching uh, the, the Super Bowl. And so I'm going to make this quick, short, so we can all get back to the game. But I wanted to say two things. Well, uh, kind of two things that happened today. Did you all see that halftime uh, ad, ad with uh, Shaggy? I think he must have listened to my previous uh uh, 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 Facebook Live, and they must have decided to put it together for this because it was so weird that he sang just that song that I played a couple days ago. So that was exciting. And then today was also a teaching uh, day for me, a learning opportunity for me. Uh, the first Sunday, first uh, Sunday of every month, we get together with a functional medicine uh, physician group, and we talk about interesting cases and um, kind of everyone has a different specialty, so they all come in with their insight, a group of highly intelligent, highly motivated doctors. And today was our first day and it was an awesome get together. We learned a lot from each other. So these are true functional medicines, like biochemists, scientists, really all trying to get to the root cause. So I'm really glad to be a part of the group and I can't wait to learn more from them. So today, those were two, two exciting things that happened today, apart from the Super Bowl, apart from the Super Bowl. So today we're going to just talk about gut anatomy. So uh, that's why I put on my lab coat, uh, Dr. Viviana Samwa, gastroenterology. I hope you see my sign. There you go. And um, I'm playing anatomy professor, but I, I actually just want to talk about, you know, the different parts of the, uh, the different organs in the GI system. And when you have pain, what to share with your doctor in terms of location. So we see a lot of patients and they come in and they're like, I have pain in my abdomen. And for a GI doctor, that is very confusing because we're like, where, which side, where? So I'm gonna do a quick mini demonstration and tell you what we can see and what we can't see. And then I hopefully can share my screen so you can look at an actual anatomy book, okay? So I'm gonna start. I will be disrobing, but I'm just disrobing for this uh, demonstration. I'm not fully disrobing, so you guys don't, don't be worried. Okay, so, all right. This is my heart here. So this is my left side, and this is my right side. So we have four quadrants. I'm gonna come a bit closer. We have four quadrants in the abdomen. The left upper quadrant, the left lower quadrant, the right upper quadrant, and the right lower quadrant. And where I put the little star is my belly button, so that's the umbilicus, and that sometimes we refer to as the periumbilical area. So when you have pain, so some people are like, I have pain in my abdomen. We kind of want to know where it is. So if it is in the left upper quadrant, the organs here, you have the stomach, you have the spleen, and you probably have a little bit of small bowel, but this is essentially stomach and spleen, okay? So when patients say, my gallbladder hurts, and they point to this area, I, tr I don't roll my eyes, but I'm like, you know, it's always good to educate. They didn't go to med school, and I'm like, the gallbladder is on this side. This is the right upper quadrant. The liver is here, and the gallbladder sits right underneath the, the liver. So sometimes you can actually have gallbladder pain on this side, but gallbladder pain can radiate to the back as well. So if you have a pain that radiates to the back, it could be gallbladder, but keep in mind that this red line here is your diaphragm. And any pain that touches the diaphragm, anything that's upper abdomen can touch the diaphragm and cause irritation because again, inflammation we talked about this yesterday, there's a lot of crosstalk. And so whenever there's inflammation and the diaphragm feels it, you can feel pain all along here, but we always ask, well, you know, where do you feel it the most? And a question that I always ask my patients is, 
use one finger and really try and hone in on where you feel most of your pain. And to that, they respond, they, they, they all do great. So again, left upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. Left lower quadrant, usually right over here, we have the colon, intestines, but we can also have hernias along here, right? The ovary is a little bit lower down, right lower quadrant, again, colon, intestines, but this is very often where we have issues with the appendix. If your appendix is still in, this can be where you have issues as well with the appendix, okay? So in this area here. And then when we go lower down, we're looking at the pelvis. So sometimes pelvic issues can be related to the colon, but they can also be related to, if you're a woman, female issues, the uterus, uh, the ovaries and things like that. So we've got a good idea of the anatomy the area right here, right under the diaphragm is the epigastric area, okay, epigastric. So generally this is really where the food pipe meets the stomach, the epigastric area, okay? One last time and then we're good to go. Epigastric, left upper quadrant, stomach, right upper quadrant, liver gallbladder, left lower quadrant, colon, sigmoid, an area where we may frequently get diverticulitis, and then you've got here right lower quadrant appendix, terminal ilium, things like that. And then pelvic lower down. In the middle, right at the belly button, periumbilical. And when you have periumbilical issues, it could be in part related to small intestine because the small intestine is all over here. So I am going to try and share my screen. Hopefully it works. We will see. And let's see if this works so that I can actually show you the organs. If you are finding this useful, please like our page, share some love, leave a comment. If you have questions, please let me know. We are gonna try and make this short and sweet. I hope people can see my, pay, my uh, I'm gonna try and share if it will allow me to share, so we'll see. It may not allow me to share, we'll see. Ooh, here we go. Uh, I'm not sure it's gonna, oh, here we go here. Oh, it's not allowing me to sh share. Maybe this is because I'm live. You're live, I'm not sure why it's not allowing me to share the screen this time. I wish it would. I'm gonna share automatically and see what you guys actually see. I wonder if you can see this. I'm not sure. Probably not. If you can't, well, I was trying to show you an image of the anatomy of the GI tract. I'm gonna try one more time. No, Facebook, it, I, I can't, I, I'm not sure how to do it, but it's okay. Uh, but basically it was gonna be a quick, 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 quick discussion about the GI tract and um, the different parts of the GI tract. So what's really important is when we do an upper endoscopy, we actually stay within the lumen. So we cannot see, yeah, I cannot, okay. We cannot see, things, Karen. We cannot see the organs outside of the lumen. So very often I'll hear patients, when I finish an upper endoscopy, they'll ask, doc, how did my liver look? How did my gallbladder look? And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't see that. I, you know, I, I should have set the expectations before we went in. But so these are things, these are organs that we see once we actually open up, once, we, once a surgeon opens you up and is able to see. So we can't see the liver, we cannot see the gallbladder, we cannot see the pancreas. And so when an upper endoscopy is done and they don't find anything and a colonoscopy is done and nothing is found to explain your pain or your discomfort, Remember that there's still about almost 17 to 24 feet of small intestine, depending on your height, that we can't access through endoscopy. So the GI doc's work is not over just because you had a negative EGD and colonoscopy. And that's something we really try to do at our practice is go as deep as we can to figure out what the issue is. So there is another test called a pill camera study that you swallow and it actually is like a little capsule about the size of an M&M peanut. 
and you swallow, you drink it with water, and it actually does, it travels through the entire GI tract and it records everything on a video, typically wireless. You poop it out and you recover it with like a magnet, like, like my daughter's little fairy magnet thing. And you ship it off to the company, they download it, and I can actually watch the video and look deeper inside to see if something's going on. And a lot of times I will find interesting pathology there. I've, I've read a ton of them and those tests are extremely helpful. And if a pill cam doesn't show anything, it's really important that your doctor at least gets a CT scan or an MRI to look at those extra intestinal, extra luminal organs and see what's going on. So I hope this anatomy class was helpful. I hope you all took notes. The next time you go to your doctor, you say, doc, not I'm having abdominal pain, but I am having periumbilical pain that radiates to the right upper quadrant. Impress your doctor and very often that's a great start in history taking, making it easier for your doctor to help you make a diagnosis. Again, if you like this video, please put in a like, share some love, leave a comment, leave questions. I will answer later when I can, but I think it's time for all of, all of us to get back. If you're listening live, thank you for coming to Gut Over It. If you're listening to this on the replay, enjoy and share this with friends and family. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend, what's left over. But again, have an amazing, productive, stress-free, happy next week. Bye-bye.